Hello everyone and welcome to another option for an upper stage for Starship. In the previous video I introduced the cheap option that is not reusable, that is Star Stage 1, which is sort of ghostly right here. It is a kerosene HTP pressure fed stage and it is meant to boost payloads to Uranus and Neptune from which you know, once it's on that trajectory, this thing is not coming back. It is going to boost to more than 7,000 meters per second beyond low Earth orbit. So, yep, this is not coming back, and it is meant to boost small scientific payloads to Uranus and Neptune. Some people in the comments seem to have missed that and thought that this was going to be used for TLI, that's translunar injection, or say Mars or something. No, we're not sending 30 tons or 40 tons anywhere. Uh, we are sending five tons with that stage to Uranus and Neptune, or maybe six tons to Saturn, something like that. And when you think about it, we have only ever launched Voyager 2 to Uranus and Neptune, and that was the impetus for this whole thinking about cheap upper stages for Starship, because we haven't really sent much to the outer planets. We only sent one thing to Uranus and Neptune. Voyager 2 was 800 kilograms. So being able to send five tons is an extreme benefit. Keeping in mind that the most complicated scientific instrument ever made, James Webb Space Telescope, is only six tons. So, and it's very, very expensive. Uh, so wanting more performance out of the stage is probably not necessary. You know, uh, uh, we want the cheapest handling, the simplest thing, uh, least likely to go wrong. And cryogenics is more complicated than just a kerosene HTP stage. I thought about even using nitrous oxide as the oxidizer, but that does reduce our performance to 295 seconds of specific impulse. So that reduces the performance about 5%. Uh, so yeah, this seemed like a good option. And it is storable uh, to some extent. Uh, high test peroxide does sort of decay. Um, I think that's what they use in Soyuz, that uh, I think in the descent module or something, that it lasts for about 180 days, and that's the limit to how long Soyuz can hang out at the space station. So, but we can certainly leave it inside Starship for an extended period of time without worrying about it, is the point. And so that's our goal, really. Uh, we, I didn't really want a cryogenic stage in here. I wanted it to be topped off and not topped off in the pad. Uh, sort of like a payload normally would be. But considering the flight rate of Starship, if we could launch uh, five tons to Uranus or Neptune every year, that would be an order of magnitude better. Well, many orders of magnitude better than what we've done so far. So you have to keep that in mind. There's no benefit to launching anything heavier right now. We just don't have anything heavier to send. I mean, Cassini could fit on this and uh, get on out to Uranus. It depends on whether you count the fuel that Cassini needed to make all of its flybys. Now, of course, this is going direct, so if you did do flybys, you could send more. Anyway, that was Star Stage 1. Star Stage 2 is methane and oxygen. For those methane and oxygen fans, I know you guys said, well, you know, they've got the apparatus for uh, fueling methane and oxygen there already, so of course they would use methane and oxygen. Why wouldn't they? Um, but, you know, they have to handle all sorts of payloads anyway, so they also handle krypton gas. So, you know, I don't think kerosene is anything novel to them either, or and peroxide is probably not quite as bad as nitrogen tetroxide, so, for Dragon. Uh, so, yeah, you know, I figure they could handle that too. But methane and oxygen, folks, and this one is recoverable. So this is the TLI slash Mars option. Uh, so, going to the moon or going to Mars, we have this tank. I note that some people keep trying to use Raptor for this. I don't. It's heavy. It's heavy. It's heavy and unnecessary. You just need a really small... And also, the thrust weight ratio at the end means that uh, payloads will have to be designed for really high G-forces, which we don't want. Uh, so, we've got four engines tucked in. They're actually sheer strut engines. Sorry, the decoupler collider gets in the way. Um, so, they have the stats... Uh, 70 kilonewtons, uh, 367 uh, seconds high speed. They are gas generator engines, and uh, there are four of them for redundancy and many ignitions. So they are lighter when combined than a single Raptor engine, obviously. And uh, yep, they are reasonably efficient. And having one at the top will not unbalance everything, right? There's, a, there's another thing. We want the heat shield to stay on the heat shield side. Uh, so we have a heat shield. This is going to come back down. Uh, this is the 
thing that separates it off from the starship. Uh, we, I decided to make it capsule shaped so it makes more sense to put it in the upper nose than hanging it down here though. Whether you would ever need a payload that can actually fill this, maybe a station module. Really, as these, this is for payloads that don't necessarily have to land directly. And I'm thinking station modules around the moon. Um, if, if somebody wanted to build one of those big stations kind of things, uh, complexes, you know, this would be the kind of idea. Uh, stations around Mars. Uh, payloads for Phobos and Deimos. Uh, if we wanted to do something on Phobos and Deimos, I don't think you want to try and land Starship on it. It's sort of overkill anyway. So anything for Phobos and Deimos can probably go on this. But anyway, we will uh, haul a payload. This is a test payload, have gas, 40 tons uh, out to Mars. We'll test that out first. I don't know if it can do 40 tons, we'll see. Uh, a lot has to work out, right? And then we'll test the heat shield, which may or may not actually protect the tank. Uh, so that's a custom part. So that is the test we're gonna do. We're launching from Brownsville again. That is probably not supposed to happen there. Now, during the live stream for Star Stage 1, I didn't have the operated Raptors, so now we're using the max configuration on my Raptors, which better resembles Raptor 2. And we're also using uh, the larger fuel tank for Starship, Starship 2022, and uh, commensurate uh, Super Heavy Tank 2022, uh, though that only uh, fits extra engines. So that doesn't change the amount of fuel or the dry mass. So instead of having 29 engines, we have 33 engines. So I think we'll get better efficiency and therefore have more fuel left over in Starship. And we'll have to see whether I can make the stage somewhat larger than I have already as a result. But anyway, ignition. And launch. Uh, this stage is actually fairly small right now, the Methane Oxygen Star, uh, star Stage 2. It's about 90-ish tons. Now, of course, if you want a recoverable stage, you should probably turn it into a pod. Pods work. I did think about putting heat towels at the bottom instead of an ablative heat shield style thing. Uh, however, I don't know if the heat tiles are going to work on a direct descent from the moon or, well, let's say lunar trajectory because you're going out to Mars, it's going to reduce itself to a sort of lunar trajectory anyway. Uh, but with my space planes, they error break first and then come in. So they basically do multiple passes in order to allow for the heat tiles to work. Um, with this pod, it's going to have to come directly in. So, I don't know if we wanted to go with the heat tiles or not. Uh, we need to test. Nobody's tested whether heat tiles can come in from that trajectory and do the job. So, um, we need some testing on that. Obviously, in Kerbal Space Program, you can write whatever numbers you like, but you need to. There needs to be some tests involved on that. I don't know if NASA's done that sort of thing. Okay, I think. We are going to reserve that fuel, separation, and addition. Let me just check. We're at 1,800 meters per second. Uh, it might be... I might have underdone it on the fuel. I like to have about double the current speed. Maybe a little bit more than double the current speed. I was a little bit late on cutting off that. But anyway, so we'll keep that in mind. Star Stage 2 is still just powered by batteries, so... It doesn't have any solar panels or anything, so it has to stay within Earth SOI and come straight down. It can't be lingering or anything. Probably some sort of fuel cell would be advisable. But these days we can make fairly low-powered electronics, so I think it's feasible just to have it run on batteries. Have to see. I think I'll let the sea level engines run to compensate for the fact that I didn't uh, save enough in the Super Heavy. Well, there's Florida. We were launching out of Brownsville, or Boca Chica. 
Okay, engine shut down with uh, 774 meters per second left, about a 200 kilometer orbit. And all right, so now 774 was with the payload in here. Let's see. It's a little bit forceful. Uh, it's going to hit the back. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, we are, there's a starship. Okay. Narcius. Just going to make starship maneuver away. So yeah, 1,400 meters per second left, which should be enough for the return easily. The payload is 133 tons. And in this case, it's 40 tons in the actual payload. And then, of course, the rest is the stage. We have uh, parachutes on for the recovery as well. Okay, well, let's activate thing. Oh, no. I keep doing that. I, I always think that these are the next stage, but apparently it's not. <laughs> we have released the payload. Well, actually, we released the payload adapter, which is also something. I mean, taking a look at staging, there's no reason why it should have decoupled. Um, this is the next stage. There's no reason it should have gone to a subsequent stage. This was the next thing that should have activated anyway. Whatever. Okay, going again. SAS on, throttles up, ignition, and launch. Okay, we are in orbit. Let me roll around here. So, picking up from where we left off. Okay, this time I'll be more careful with everything. Let's decouple that. Well, okay, except for that sliding to the back. That's just gonna. I'll have to reduce the force on that decoupler. That's all I can do there. Okay, now we've got the right thing. Okay, kill rotation. Grade. Let's see, point prograde. Prograde for this should be with the engines retro, uh, you know. Should point with the payload forward. <laughs> That's the idea. You can see we have 3,500 meters per second with this uh, 400, uh, sorry, <laughs> 400 would be great. 40 ton payload. So we have plenty of margin. For Mars, it's probably 30-something tons, and for Mars, we'll have to use some fuel to slow ourselves down to get back into Earth-captured situation, but not too much. Uh, Mars transfers only 500 to 800 meters per second more than uh, Earth escape velocity, so. But we uh, there is a 17-minute stage because the engines are small, which is fine, you know. And take your time. There's absolutely no reason to use a Raptor for this, is my point. We do have some inclination difference. A mid course correction would probably be necessary for correcting that, which we could still do with it. It's gonna go out and come back in anyway. Uh, so, yeah, we'll do this tentative thing and then do some sort of correction. Now, these are the shear strut engine pack engines. Also, you could just recreate the stage yourself, it just wouldn't look very nice, but with a procedural tank, it'll end up being the same deal. Maybe even lighter, because I always add some extra margin. We're probably going to do two burns, so I'm not going to tilt this far away from prograde. Okay, first boost burn. Make sure everything is balanced. Everything is balanced. Okay. Make sure we don't re-enter the atmosphere. Always important. Well, there's Florida again. I think I'm gonna shut down soon here. For our first burn. Just a three hour orbit right now. Let's go with that. So we'll come around. We'll replot this. And this time I'll get the mid-course adjustment in too. So that would be our trajectory to the moon. Could be wanting a polar orbit, but it makes no difference as far as the delta V at this point is concerned. So, one more orbit around the Earth. Okay, 
some boil off. Uh, it looks like the liquid oxygen is boiling off, but not a whole lot. We have some MLI layers, but we didn't uh, put the full level of MLI layers. That's multi-layer insulation. It is my intention to maybe use this as an upper stage for other things. And of course, uh, when you're not tucking it inside Starship, maybe a hydrogen-oxygen stage would be better. I just wanted to get away from using EUS on, on Starship or the potential for doing so because that's both expensive and not reusable. So... That is the worst of all worlds. I'm gonna keep it loose around the moon, it doesn't matter too much. Just gotta be testing re-entry, really, once we release it. Also, we're testing releasing the payload and everything, of course. So, out to mid-course adjustment. Also, the electric charge consumption. Making sure we have enough throughout the whole deal. Okay, ignition. Took us a while to sell the fuel down. Okay, so that's a good enough pass at the moon. We could get it tighter, but it wouldn't be too much difference in terms of fuel. So, we'll let the payload go now. That's 40 tons, so decouple. Yeah, we need more decoupling force on this thing, I think. Okay, well, so let's try and sidestep this. Uh... Yeah, we'll need more decoupling force on that. I'll change that now. Less on the one inside the bay, more on the one out here. The one inside the bay only has a decoupling ejection force of 10, jeez. Maybe I'll just have it be like 2. So we'll get down to that orbit just to save ourselves some time and we'll have an Earth periapsis of 60 kilometers. And that'll cost 229 to expedite. Basically pointing right at Earth to do this. All right. Interesting. Okay. We are well situated. Let's get a little bit lower, then we'll release the payload adapter. It's sort of strapped on right now. Very Mercury-like sort of the inspiration. Okay, going normal for that. I'll arm the parachutes. Okay, off goes, oh, off goes that. I didn't animate the straps, sorry about that. Um, I think it's surface positive for this because of the orientation of the engines and everything. Okay, here it goes. If it works, I will put the stages in the video description, so I'll have a zip file. Um, these engines are from the Shearstrut engine pack, the SE2008 AVs, so that's a different mod from me. I'll link that also. But that has a bunch of engines and RCS thrusters. Of course, don't forget the parachutes. I'll have adjusted the decoupling force on both the decoupler inside Starship as well as the one on the payload adapter itself. Of course, you'll need a Starship with a bay. Uh, I haven't updated my Starship because of complications with how it's tied up with the pass-through station system. So... I have to figure out how to untangle it from that, basically. Maybe I'll have something, but also I haven't gotten it balanced for the 9-engine version, so it can't really re-enter the atmosphere properly either. So, work needs to be done on Starship still. But probably there are other Starships out there. You'll just have to figure out how to mount. This one is more complicated to mount than Star, uh, Star Stage 1. Star Stage 1 will just go at the bottom normally. You could put this at the bottom too if you have a small enough payload. Interesting that the flames started there. It really likes edges and there are edges right there so... Hmm. The way they do the flame effects is interesting. Well, a blader is a blading. 
Very much so. About 9 Gs we're coming in with here. I haven't put a descent mode thing on here. I don't think that's necessary. Okay, well it survived. Just for reference, the diameter of this is 7.5 meters, so it's not small. Okay, well it's on parachute, 7.2 meters per second is fine. If we purge the fuel, we should probably be able to get it down to lower. So our dry mass for reference is 8.35 tons, basically. Not unreasonable, I don't think. It's about a 90 ton stage. Okay, so recover. And it has enough battery life so that I could probably get out further without getting into the quicker orbit. But if you do leave it out for 8 days, it's probably pushing it. So doing some sort of retro burn to cut down on the orbit period, orbital period is probably a good idea. All right, so there you have it, star stage two and star stage one, of course, we've already discussed. So I'll link the package in the video description, but again, uh, you might need the sure start engine pack and it's up to you to make it work out. I, I'll figure out something with my starship, my updated starship models eventually. But yes, for now, Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.